Hi, Shane Shaughnessy here, Orange County Crew One saw team on Alpha Mod. Uh, here today to talk about Pulaski's proper maintenance, use, and handling. Uh, with the Pulaski, you have two components you have your grubbing side and you have your cutting side. Uh, this tool is used in fire line construction, taking out stobs and uh, roots underneath the, uh, the dirt there. So before sharpening your Pulaski, you want to make sure that you have the proper PPE on. First, you want to have gloves. Next, you want to make sure you have your long sleeve on. You want to have a file with a sheath. You want to have a pair of safety glasses. So proper field sharpening, you're going to go ahead and make a figure four with your legs. You're going to place the Pulaski in between the two, resting the head on the knee. Get a nice firm grasp on that, making sure it won't go anywhere. You're gonna want the blade facing away from you. You're gonna place the file parallel with the ax head and go ahead and when you're ready to sharpen, make sure, again, make sure that you have a firm grasp on the tool itself. You're gonna go ahead and go away from the cutting, cutting edge itself, full lengths of the file. You're gonna go ahead and complete, complete each stroke, going a full, full length of the cutting side. You're gonna go ahead and get the grubbing edge nice and sharp as well. You can go ahead and either stick the cutting, the cutting edge into a fresh piece of cut log, down log or root. You can go ahead and place the file handle on the back side of the head, resting it there, getting a nice flat angle so you don't see any sunlight between the file and the cutting side itself. So when you go ahead and you get this, you're gonna go ahead and get the file at about a 35 degree angle. Again, completing full strokes with the file. And you're gonna go across here until that's nice and sharp. So for all, all tools, not just the Pulaski, you wanna ensure the five S's. You wanna make sure that your tool is sharp. Hence the sharpening edge, the grubbing edge. You wanna make sure your tool's straight. Inspect the handle, make sure there's no defects, no curvatures or fractures. You wanna make sure that everything is smooth, that it's been sanded down and treated with linseed oil, that's safe to use. And you want, last but not least, you wanna make sure that the tool head and the handle are secure. Go ahead and do this by stepping on either side of the tool head and shaking the handle side by side, making, checking to see if there's play in between the two. If not, you're good to go. That's the five S's. Hi, I'm Robert Opel. I work on OCFA Crew One, um, A Buggy. I'm going to be talking to you today about the shovel maintenance and uh, how to sharpen it out in the field and back in the shop. Um, first, there's two parts of the shovel. Shovel head, which is going to be sharp, and then we're going to have the handle, which we want to make it smooth. Um, we want to make sure that all the rivets are nice and secure. When we're looking at the head, we're making sure that there's no cracks, dings. We're making sure that all the welds are nice and smooth. And if they're not smooth, we're gonna return it and get a new one. So now going over maintenance and sharpening, make sure we have proper PPE, which is long sleeves, eye protection, and gloves. We're gonna be using a 12 inch file with a handle and a protector. Now when we do sharpen, you wanna have one knee to secure the handle. We're going to take the top and we're going to go in a forward motion using the whole side of the file. So again, it's from the bottom to the top, one motion, all the way out. And again, one smooth, continuous motion. You want to make sure that your file is at a 45 degree angle and you want to secure it all the way across from the bottom to the top. And now let's go back to the station and I'll show you how to sharpen it inside our workshop. So now we're gonna put the shovel in the vise. It really doesn't matter what angle you have it at, just make sure that you're comfortable on um, the proper technique. So again, we're gonna go start, I'm gonna start from the, the top, this time we'll work towards the bottom. Hi, my name is Brad Prancevic. I'm with Orange County Crew One here at Tribuco. Uh, today we're going to go over the McLeod. I use it as a wildland firefighting tool. 
It's gonna have two edges, a scraping edge, and then a rake edge. When sharpening the big cloud, make sure you have all your proper PPE on. You're gonna have a long sleeve or a Nomex yellow on, your gloves, and eye protection. You're gonna sharpen your scraping edge only. Uh, place the tool on the ground with the rake ends facing down, and place your knee over the tool. Make sure you're sharpening across the entire edge of the tool using the entire file. Uh, sharpening angle for this will be at a 45 degree. When you're back at the station, another way you can sharpen it is going to be using a vise. Uh, secure it inside the vise, and you'll get your sharpening angle here. You're still going to go all the way across using the whole length of the file. Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Flores and I'm on Orange County Crew 1 Bravo. And today, I'm going to be talking about drip torches. Safety, how to use them, and when to use them. Drip torches are a tool that we use when we do any type of burning operations. Anytime you use a drip torch, you want to make sure you wear full PPE. Gloves, long sleeve, night protection. Drip torches ratio is going to be 3 to 1, 3 parts diesel to 1 part gas. The drip torch itself has a few main components. We have the wick, the wick holder, you have the nozzle here, the spout with the pigtail, the lock ring, and the breathing valve back here, which controls the airflow into a drip torch, which controls also the amount of fluid coming out of the nozzle. Okay, now we're gonna go over how to put the drip torch together. But before that, we wanna make sure we have our PPE on. So I'm going to put my gloves on. After I got my gloves on, first thing I'm going to do is remove the lock ring. I'm going to remove the cap and place it on the cap holder side. The spout has two different portions. It has the cap holder side and it has a filter side. You always want to make sure that the filter is clean, that the filter is there, and not broken. After you've checked all that, you want to remove the spout from the drip torch. You want to flip it over carefully, and before placing it in, you also want to make sure that the o-ring is in place, so we prevent any leaking. And once you got that in, we'll go ahead, put the cap back on. So you got it nice and tight. You want to make sure that the pigtail is facing opposite from the handle, which will prevent the fluid coming on yourself, but actually going over the wick and dropping onto the ground. Now to light the drip torch, we first want to drop a small amount on the ground. After that, we want to get a lighter and light that source. Once we got that source lit, we then stick our wick. We have the wick lit. When we use a drip torch, you want to use it in a safe manner, holding it away from your body, swinging it back and forth. When you're ready to extinguish the wick, you never want to blow directly into the wick. You always want to use your hands, your gloved hands, to shut down the flames. 